First reading is from Jeremiah chapter 11. Now, Jeremiah, known as the weeping prophet, is in a bind. He has been called by God to proclaim a message of judgment to the people of Israel. And they, in turn, literally want to kill the messenger. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you, I have committed my cause, the word of the Lord. The second reading is from James chapter 3. This text shows us the difference between true wisdom and false wisdom. Think about how it relates in our world today. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy with selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder and you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. So one of my 
favorite things is to overhear kids playing. I love to hear how they like not only use their imagination, but also how they work out conflicts between one another too. Now sometimes those conflicts result in hitting each other or screaming at each other, but often there's some really creative ways that they work things out with each other. And so uh, recently in my neighborhood, the neighborhood was playing what they like to call gorilla. It's where Brett is a gorilla <laughs> and yells a lot and chases them. And I don't really understand completely what all is involved in gorilla other than it's noisy and the kids have a blast. And one of the younger kids was kind of slowest because obviously the older kids can run faster than some of the younger kids. And at one point, the younger kid got really mad and yelled, but I am the greatest runner in the world. He was furious that he was getting caught up with everybody else. At another point, I heard another young kid Brett was coming up to and said, I'm invisible now. And Brett was like, oh, oh, weird. I don't know where they went. But when I was reading the gospel reading this morning, I couldn't help but think, of the disciples a little bit as a group of neighborhood kids who are arguing with one another. In some ways, the disciples are going, but I'm the greatest runner in the world. You aren't the greatest runner in the world. I am the very best disciple, and I tell everybody that. You can't be, you can't start telling people that because then people will think that I am a liar. Jesus had been teaching them about what was going to happen to him, that he would be betrayed and killed and rise on the third day. Jesus reveals to them that he is the Messiah. He's the one that they have been waiting so long for, but that is not what they expected would happen to the Messiah. So as they are walking along the road, you would expect that maybe they would try to figure out what is Jesus actually saying? But instead, they're arguing about something that is so incredibly insignificant to the kingdom of God. Who's the greatest? But it is something that I think we are all tempted to do too if we're really honest with ourselves. Jesus tells them, and us too, that we need to be servant disciples. That we need to be humble and generous, forgiving and grace-filled. And that is not easy to do. We want to serve God, but we also really like to watch our investments and see them grow. So often we would rather be right than we would rather be humble. So often we would rather be righteous than be at peace with one another. And so often when we create the pecking order and the list, we tend to put ourselves at the very top. And we talk about things that put each other into these categories too. Who's dressed the best and who has the fanciest car and the biggest house and the nicest kitchen? It's so often that the most the people who we deem as the most successful in our world happen to be the richest, and they are the ones that we hold up as models in our society. If we're honest, too, we do this as churches also. I find myself doing this sometimes, too. We often define our success by numbers. How many people were in worship on a Sunday? How many kids went to Sunday school? How does that compare to other churches that are in our area? Even the fights that we have with one another so often, that we want to decorate the sanctuary in a new way, and we really see that vision in two very different ways, and so we fight about it. We get frustrated that we sang a particular hymn, or maybe we didn't sing a particular hymn that really felt like we should have. But Jesus would remind us in our gospel reading that those are really the wrong questions to be asking. What matters is what we do when there is a stranger in our midst. What matters is that we treat one another with respect and love. 
We also see in our second reading from James that we should be wise. We should be peaceful, gentle, full of mercy and good fruits. Really easier said than done. But at least James acknowledges the war that happens within us. The war of wanting to be the greatest in our earthly standards. I really want a Toyota Grand Highlander, guys. Maybe someday I will get it. But do I need a Toyota Highlander right now? No, my cars are just fine. But we have those things that run through our head. As we define success by those things of do we have the Grand Highlander or not? So we have that war within us, the war of wanting what the world says we should want, but then also living differently because that is what Jesus calls us to. We are constantly in conflict with what the world tells us is best and what Jesus calls us to. Whoever wants to be first must be last and servant of all. And just in case we and the disciples that Jesus is talking to didn't understand that point, Jesus takes a child and places the child in his arms and tells them, whoever welcomes what such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Now, in Jesus' time, children had the lowest status in society. They were the very bottom. Of, and so, to think about, for us, who has the lowest status in our society? Who's the least powerful? That is who we are called to welcome in our midst. Servant discipleship, I think, is the hardest spiritual practice of all. Loving others and trying to see the best in others and giving people the benefit of the doubt before jumping to accusations continually over and over again, even when it's just really exhausting. We keep working to try to love one another. But it is holy work, and it is the work that Jesus calls us to. Now, when I said that one kid yelled, but I'm the fastest runner in the world. The other great thing I got to watch is one of the older kids slow down and come run alongside him and say, yes, you are the fastest runner in the world and help take him to a place where they could hide from the gorilla Brett and do their thing. We don't always get it right, but sometimes we get to see these beautiful little glimpses, like the oldest kid coming and running alongside the youngest kid. So let's try our best to keep working towards the kingdom of God. Amen.
Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. Instill in your church a spirit of humility and curiosity that we may embrace all who seek you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you shape the world so there is more than enough for all. Curb our habits of overuse and guide us toward more sustainable sources of energy, food, and water. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, your peace brings justice and solidarity. Encourage peace among peoples, tribes, and nations. Heal divisions in our country and local communities, that together we might cooperate for the good of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, you draw near to you all who are in need. Bring healing and wholeness to all that suffer. Transform economic, political, and social systems that oppress vulnerable people, especially systems of structural racism and general, generational poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Transforming God, you accompany all through changes and transitions. Help us to see where you are calling this community to new ways of living, the gospel promise. Assure us that even as change brings loss, it also brings hope and life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, you embrace us on our final pilgrimage from this life. Accompany all who have died, especially Pastor Paul Krampitz, Console his family and friends and Bethany Lutheran and Cromwell, where he was pastor, as they mourn his loss. Hear us, O great. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. 